Excellent. So uh, our next speaker is going to be Jeremy Sylvain. Uh, Jeremy uh, is the undergraduate uh, winner from our, our student paper competition. Um, and Jeremy's going to talk about modeling uh, injuries in the NHL. Uh, originally from Arundel, Maine, he's an economics major uh, and a minor in statistics at St. Lawrence University. And I, 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 I know the dean said that we were going to keep the judges anonymous, but putting them on the program kind of uh, mixed that. Um, I should note that I, I was not involved in the judging, um, so uh, there is that. Uh, Jeremy loves looking at all kinds of sports data, uh, however his passion is hockey. Um, he's on the crew team at St. Lawrence, um, but prior to St. Lawrence he played hockey uh, from age three all the way through junior. Can uh, everybody hear me all right? So, uh, like Dr. Schachter said, uh, I've talked about the probability and severity of uh, man games lost due to injury in the NHL regular season. Um, the goal of the uh, project was to uh, create some models for uh, individual players' probability of uh, injury and the probability of or, uh, severity of injury. So. The uh, teams that are injured uh, struggle to have success in the, uh, leading into the postseason. And one of the most common things you hear in the preseason is, uh, how do you think your team's going to do this year? Most people respond, if they stay healthy, they have a good shot. Unless you're Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the amount of time missed due to injuries uh, impacts management decisions on who they want to call up from the AHL or uh, line shifts on who they want to put into uh, fill a gap. Um, and then we chose variables that we thought were uh, potentially uh, able to increase the probability of the severity of uh, injury. So uh, just a little background information. In uh, 2016 and 17 season, the correlation between the percent cap hit of an injured player and the uh, points per game loss was uh, negative 0.31. So if you, the more you have, uh, the more cap that you lose due to an injury, uh, it's going to decrease your points per game. And in the same season, uh, Vancouver, Winnipeg, and Buffalo all missed the playoffs, and they were the three most injured teams in the league. Whereas Toronto, uh, St. Louis, Washington, and uh, Calgary. Calgary. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Calgary all made the playoffs, and uh, St. Louis and Washington both moved on, but. We don't know what Washington's going to do tonight. <laughs> um, so I'm going to point out the data that we used. Um, the first off, the data came from mangamesloss.com and hockeyreference.com. So a big thank you to uh, for them for the data. Uh, very useful, and I wouldn't have been able to do the project without it. Uh, the data comes from 2009 to 2016 seasons, um, and that allowed us to create stable estimates. And the first variable is the uh, INJ variable, which is the games lost uh, from the player due to injury. Uh, next is the EP, obviously games played. Uh, time on ice per game is the average time on ice a player uh, plays and during all situations. Hits per game is the uh, number of hits a player uh, gives divided by the number of games he played. Blocks per game is the shots a player blocks divided by games played also. The player's age is the uh, player's age as of January 1st of that each season, and that's in days, and then we divide it by 365 to give our uh, age in days estimate. Their age, and then we squared the uh, age term because we think that a uh, player's career trajectory is quadratic, where they start off, they have really low production in their first couple of years of their career, and then as they get older, um, their career increase, their production increases, and then towards the end of their career, it decreases a little, and we tried to model that in their age as well. Um, this is an example. I used Bobby Ryan, uh, figuring out in Ottawa. Um, I tried to use Carlson, but the guy doesn't get hurt, so. Um, um, uh, so the INJ variable, Bobby Ryan missed 12 games in the 2013-14 season. Uh, he played 70, 70 games. Uh, he had 14.1 uh, time on ice per game that season. He hit. He had 1.41 hits per game. Uh, he had 0.43 blocks per game, so not really uh, jumping in front of the pucks here. Uh, 
and he was 26 in the season, and then obviously you square that and you get 718. Uh, to make it clear, we limited the games played and injury to be combined to 10 games. So if you had, so as long as you uh, had a combination to equal 10 games, you were gonna be in the data set, and we felt that that would, if they played, if they had less than 10, that was going to be, uh, they weren't gonna see the rigors of an NHL season. And we also eliminated anybody that saw uh, 82 games in a regular season because uh, 82 games lost due to injury because they obviously weren't hurt during that season. And we did the same thing for the 12-13 uh, season, but we limited that to 48 because there was only 48 games during that season. Uh, the data in all situations, we uh, and this is just a, this is the aggregated amount. Uh, so. So there's about so you can see that there's an average of 947 uh, game uh, players in each season, um, and then you can see that in the 2012-13 uh, season for the percentage of players injured, uh, that's 13.6, where the average across all seven seasons was uh, 20.2, so it's definitely lower. And the similar thing happens with the uh, average games missed for a player, that's 4.01, and the average was 6.3. Um, and we broke the data down even further by, uh, by position because we felt that certain positions are going to uh, uh, be affected differently. You can see in this graph, the uh, black is going to be uh, forwards blocking per game and then the red is defense. Um, so you can see that defense are going to block a lot significantly more, uh, significantly higher amount of shots. And then probably down here in the corner still have to jump in front of the puck. Uh, Ovechkin's not on the map because he can't get back into the defensive zone. Uh, so, the analysis is that we used hits per game and blocks per game as uh, collision variables because we thought that if you are colliding with a puck or a player, that's going to increase your probability and severity of injury. And then we used time on ice because um, it increased your exposure to uh, being injured while you're out there on the ice. And then to account for susceptibility, we included age. And like I said, we used age squared to try to model the quadratic uh, predicted career tra trajectory. Um, so these are, these are the models. Uh, we used, like I said, we used the model for, to predict uh, player probability and uh, player injury probability and then injury severity. And we broke these down by uh, we broke these down by position and uh, by season. And what I put on the model is the uh, all seasons. So it's an aggregate of all seven seasons we used in the study. Uh, first off is the uh, injury probability model. Uh, we use the binary response variable. Uh, so the injury prob variable is one if uh, the INJ variable I discussed earlier was greater than zero. So it's predicting the probability of uh, injury in each season. And then the models run uh, by position and defense. All right, by forward and defense, you don't break it out in between uh, wings and centers. <coughs> the injury severity model uh, models the average game, or the predicted games lost due to injury based on the same factors. It's based on a Poisson distribution. Uh, so the uh, <coughs> response has a logarithmic function. And, like, and we, like the probability model is run for each position and by season again. Um, so we fit the models for each season. Um, we report the results by position and by season, and then the full results are on my poster. Uh, if you want to come take a look at that after. Um, so the first, uh, the injury probability for forwards. The time on ice was a significant factor in predicting the probability of injury across all seasons. Um, <clears throat> hits per game, age, and age squared all had significance in some seasons, and the number behind the variable is the number of seasons that it was significant. And then um, time on ice per game, age and age squared were significant in the all models. Uh, I just want to note that blocks per game was not significant in any of the models for this, um, for the forwards. <clears throat> Next is the defense. Um, <clears throat> time on ice per game was significant in each season except for uh, 2012 and 13. The uh, hits per game at age and age squared were similar to the uh, forward model and where it was significant in those respective seasons. And then 
time-wise hits per game age and age squared were all significant in the all-seasons model, and then similarly blocks per game is not significant in predicting the probability of injury as well. So for the, for, uh, for the injury severity model for the forwards, um, age and age squared were significant in each season. Uh, time on ice per game was significant in six seasons. So same with hits per game and blocks per game was uh, significant in five seasons in predicting the severity of an injury. And all variables were significant in the all seasons model. So age and age squared for the, uh, severi the severity model for defense were similarly predict uh, were significant in each season. Time on ice per game, hits per game, and blocks per game were significant in some seasons. And then uh, everything except for blocks per game was significant in the all seasons model um, for, this, for the severity model for defense. So we did the application for the uh, Ottawa Senators for the 2016-17 season. So, we fit the, uh, so the, what we did for the simulation is we fit the all seasons model uh, we applied the model to each Ottawa Senator and predicted the uh, injury probability and injury severity. And then we stored the total man games lost. And then we ran this simulation for about for a thousand times. And what you can see here is we created a distribution um, where we removed Clark MacArthur because he uh, missed 78 games due to injury in the 15-16-17 uh, season. But that injury occurred in the previous season. Uh, before, so it wasn't an injury that was happened during this season. Uh, the red line up here is the uh, actual man games lost, which was, I believe, with removing Clark MacArthur was 133, um, and then our predicted um, model had 98.5 man games lost due to injury. <clears throat> so the above models. What we accomplished was we laid the groundwork for future study in NHL injuries. Um, time on ice was the most significant factor in predicting the probability of an injury, where age and age squared were the most important factors in predicting the severity of an injury. And we came across a couple issues, and one of them is players who block shots are good at blocking shots. So that what that means is that the players that are going to jump in front of the puck are using the padded areas. So they're mitigating their probability of getting injury, injured due to a block shot. Um, they're more likely to be injured seeing an Eric puck in front of the net, like uh, Logan Couture did in the playoffs. Um, and hitters are braced for uh, the hit. So if you're going to initiate a hit, you're ready to take that hit, rather than an unsuspecting forward who's going to get lined up by Dustin Bufflin uh, and just get commanded. Uh, so potential. <laughs> Potential out would be the frequency of being hit. Uh, that's a stat that could be uh, incorporated into increasing the, prob increasing the probability or severity of injury. Um, special teams, we, like I said, we didn't differentiate between uh, differentiate between uh, situations. So probability might increase if you're going to be on the penalty kill, where you're seeing more shots being taken toward you. Um, and then modeling long-term injuries. There's several players in several cases throughout seasons where they miss a upwards of 65 games each season. And that, that really uh, disrupts the distribution of injuries where most players see five to 10 games missed due to an injury. And then you have the players that are seeing 60 to 70 games lost uh, due to an injury. So like I said, uh, it did, the larger injuries, it, it, uh, it disrupts the distribution. So looking forward, we might use a mixture distribution where we can try to evenly simulate uh, lower end frequency uh, injuries, and then also the higher end frequency of injuries. And then the special teams play would be uh, definitely something to look at uh, because the uh, forward that saw the penalty kill might be at risk of getting injured more than they are if they're on a regular strength, uh, an even strength situation. And then finally, are players injury prone or are they just unlucky? So we'll get across all seasons and see if they have see how many players get injured in that season and then see if there's certain players within each data set that are going to be, uh, that reoccur commonly uh, to see if they're injury prone or if they're just unlucky and missing a high frequency of games in each season. So thank you for listening. Questions for Jeremy? 
Um, Um, I work in health and safety, and the one things we look at are pre-existing conditions and reoccurrences. So, any thoughts about incorporating that into your model? Yeah, absolutely. You definitely look at uh, trying to reincorporate uh, pre-existing injuries. Um, like, I mean, the big one is concussions now. I mean, Crosby is under protocol, and I mean, you said yesterday we started practicing. I know my body has done this several times now. And, um, you'd want to see, you'd want to try to incorporate that into a model to see, all right, is it, is it another head injury? How long is he going to be out for for a longer time? Or if it's a reoccurring knee injury or something? That would definitely be something um, that would be crucial to predicting the probability of a length of injury. Uh, just a quick question. I wonder if you had any model performance statistics. Did you do a training and test set? How accurate was the model in actually predicting the default and then the severity? That's what, um, I think that's what we looked at with uh, this was, we used, so we used the data set from uh, 2000, we used our data set from 2009 to 16 to build our model. And then this was the 16, 17 auto senators roster that we used to see how well it performed um, when we looked at a completely different data set from what the model was built off of. Okay, so were there any like, accuracy statistics as uh, no. far as the prediction? Okay. Question. Do you think that moving out the uh, right here, just because it's back to the right here? No, we didn't look at it. We just kind of wanted to get the most stable estimates we could. So um, the strike here, where they were different, they still had uh, valuable statistics and losing games due to injury. Um, it might be something to look at to run the models again. Well, the time on ice is so important. That's running over a season. I, I think you said that you removed the long-term injuries, the Clark MacArthur's and the, I guess, the Chris Pronger, technically. Um, did you take out players, I guess, at the end of their career who are quote-unquote injured but probably not coming back because it's just a convenient excuse for a coach to take a veteran out of the lineup? Chris like, yeah, maybe. Like the long-term injury reserve players like uh, Nathan Wharton and uh, players like that, or? Uh, no, more like guys who have probably outlived their usefulness, Chris Phillips, Chris Neal, that kind of thing, where they get injured and they're they're probably healthy at a certain point, but they stay, quote unquote, injured because they just don't want to no, we, player. We, we didn't eliminate that. Um, if they, we didn't eliminate those kind of players that like they might have been healthy and then they were, and they stayed on the injured reserve. Um, but that would definitely be something to look at in the future. Let's thank you everyone more time.